So my talk today is all about emotions and especially one emotion and that is anger. Because anger for me is one of my most important drivers in an absolutely positive way. Every time when I get really, really angry, then something big is following. So to give you an example, join me and come back with me to the year 2017. I was invited to one of these huge sustainability events where an award is given. And I was sitting in the audience like all of you right now. And then it came to the end and everybody who was on stage during the program should come up again for a photo to hold on this moment for eternity. And that for me absolutely worked, the thing with eternity, because this picture and this moment is branded forever in my mind. I was kind of shocked. I could not believe what I saw. There were really only men on stage in 2017. The award winners, the experts, the law daters, and even the moderator. Often, as least, at least, you have a female moderator as a fig leaf. Often this is my job, so I know this very well. But in this case, there were really only men on stage. So I got angry, for sure, but in this moment, I didn't know what to do with this strong emotion. So I think I had some drinks afterwards at the party, but we all know alcohol is not a solution and above all, not a long-lasting one. So I went back home a little bit tipsy and in the following weeks I lost sleep about the question how can I find a constructive way to make a difference? And you have to know that this event at the end of 2017 was only the famous straw that broke the camel's back because in the years before I worked a lot as a moderator for conferences and panel discussions and events about sustainability and it was always the same problem and the same picture. There were nearly no women on stage. And the crazy thing is, I met a lot of female sustainability experts on these events, but always next to the stage, not on the stage. So you can imagine and maybe feel it till today that I got more and more angry over the years and so I decided I have to do something and this eye-opening moment in 2017 was only the last little push I needed to take action. And so I did that. In spring 2018, my second baby was born after my son and I called it Future Woman. And what I did was I interviewed a lot of these female sustainability experts I met over the years and published these interviews on our homepage. And that worked because I wanted the world to know all these fantastic women. And today we are more than 200 women on our platform and there is expertise for every topic of sustainability. And you won't believe it, even for the steel industry, the construction industry and the automotive sector. So I never want to hear again the stupid excuse, sorry, we could not find a woman for our program. That's bullshit. Then you weren't really looking for. So I think we always have to ask why in life. Why do I do what I do? So why have we founded Future Woman? I say we because in the meanwhile we are three founders. And we didn't do that because it's nice to have more women on stage or on photos later on. And we didn't do that to make the women feel better. No, there is a much bigger reason for all of us. We are absolutely convinced that we need the female skills equivalent to the male ones to save the world and to design and create a more sustainable and a better future. To be convinced is not enough, I know that very well. And because of that, we did a scientific study last year to prove this claim. And the impressive result is that there are at least, at least six female skills. They are absolutely important for a better future. So because of my time slot, I cannot talk about all the six today, but let me point out two. 
And for the first one, I like to ask all of you, have you ever heard the sentence, women are so damn complicated all the time? Yes, I think we all know that sentence, but let's switch that into something positive. That is what we did for the study. Let's say women think in complex systems and with more foresight. Sounds so much better, doesn't it? And it's the truth. So let me explain how we can use this, especially in a business context. To ask a lot of questions and to discuss possible problems before you start something new is absolutely necessary to minimize the risk to fail. So I want to introduce three women to you. They used this skill in a fantastic way, I think. They founded reefs and they want to rebuild coral reefs. And a lot of people all around the world try to do that because coral reefs are in danger. But these three women of reefs are more successful than the others. And the question is why? What did they do differently? The answer is simple. They used the skill I talk about. I had an interview with them and they told me before they started their pilot project, they used much time to ask all important questions. And there were a lot, you can imagine, because a coral reef is a very complex ecosystem and the ocean as well. So they brought together their different expertise from their different directions. And that was marine science, engineering and art. And at the end, they had a complete overview about what's needed to build a perfect artificial coral reef. And now success is there. At their pilot project in Colombia, hundreds of sweet little baby corals have been counted. And now they work on their next goal, and that is to scale up this project. That's fantastic, I think. So let's come to the second female force I want to talk about and that is that women are very tough and capable of suffering. And every woman who has ever given birth to a child knows exactly what I mean and everybody who has maybe joined a birth knows it as well. So we need this skill especially in crisis. And you all know we have a lot of crisis around us. And we need the skill to change systems because you need a long breath for that. And one system we definitely have to change is our way of consuming. It's still normal to buy and to produce everything new and again and again. So it's really a big challenge to make secondhand the new sexy, the first choice and the new normal. But I want to talk about two future women. They accepted this challenge and I'm absolutely sure of they will become game changers. Their names are Annabelle von Reutern and Evolina de Wilde. And Annabelle founded Concular and that is a second hand platform for the construction industry. And what they do is they collect information where buildings are demolished and then they search for someone who is interested in reusing the materials of these buildings. So Annabelle told me sometimes it's really hard because to change the construction industry is hard. This industry is very male influenced and you have encrusted systems and Annabelle told me often I'm only invited as the young female disturber. But it's okay, I love to be a disturber if I can change systems with that. And let's come to Evolena and what she d does is she wants to make secondhand the first choice. And for this, she founded Fercado, and that is a browser application. And after you have downloaded it, every time when you search for a product online, you get a secondhand offer on your screen, directly on your screen. And that is a game changer. 
And Evolena told me that it was really hard at the beginning when they started. They have to beg for money. I think that's normal for a startup. But it was very complicated to get in contact with all the huge companies. And now Wind has changed. She told me that CEOs from all over the world now call her to ask if and how they can work together. And some of them call her from their holidays. I think that's a turning point, isn't it? So my big wish is let us bring the best skills from all of us together. Because what we are doing right now is kind of stupid. To not use the female skills is stupid. So let us be smart and let us use the whole power we have to save the world. And we have to save the world for us. The planet don't need us. We have to save the world. When I talk about the female skills, I don't mean the biological gender. But the systems we are living in for decades now have saved that skills like empathy, emotionality and resilience are more often used by women. And because of that, we call them the female skills. But every skill can be used by every gender. And we should do that because I would like to invite all of you to work on the most important topic of humanity, and that is sustainability. And for this, we need especially you gentlemen. We need your support, and it would be so great to be supported by you. And if you have no idea how you can do this, I have some proposals for you. First, Open your mind and be interested in the female perspective. Sometimes it's eye-opening, I promise you. Second, when you have your next invitation for a panel discussion, for example, ask how many women will be there. And if the answer is no, you can set a sign and cancel the invitation. A few men used to do that right now, so a little bit pressure on you. My third point is when you have to make your next business decision, ask yourself which skills do we, do we need for the future? Do we need more female skills and how can I make my team more diverse? And my last and very important point is let us accept and celebrate that we are allowed to use emotions, especially in a business context. Emotions make us human, so we should use them, especially in a business context. And what emotions can create, my story shows, even anger. So if you ask me if there is an impact of future women right now, sorry, I have to pass, I cannot answer that. Maybe we can measure that one day. But for me, there is an impact even now. Because the organizer of the event I was talking about at the beginning today publish their women quota and they get applause for that. Funny side note. Okay, they never said thank you to me, but that is okay. I don't need their credits. My credit is to see that things are changing. Thank you very much. <laughs>